Okay, so the next part of this is uh, I'm going to bring in the actual data. And this is for this class probably the most important aspect of how we're going to use GIS. Everything we store, as I showed in the demo on YouTube, all the data we store, we're going to store as text files. And um, as long as they have some kind of geographic reference, like latitude, longitude, we can bring those in as point objects in GIS and then reference them onto the world. Okay? Um, so for this demo, I have included the SOFON PRD data set. This is one of the kind of weekly data sets that I'm gathering for, for your use in your projects. Um, and I have a description of that data set online. So here's my text file. Uh, if I try to open this up. Oh, by the way, just as a note, if you're trying to open up these data sets in text reader or whatever, the notepad, whatever the basic uh, text editing software, <coughs> you're going to notice that anything over a megabyte, like a megabyte of text is a lot of data, actually. Um, this is 26 megabytes, right? I think it's about 105,000 entries. If you try to open this in Notepad, it's going to take a long time. Notepad's not optimized to read large text files. If you're going to be opening these up and editing them, I would recommend getting a real text editor. Um, something that works really well is uh, Sublime Text. You can see it, it opened it up pretty fast. Um, but we're not going to be really working with the text, obviously, that much. This is just to show you what it has um, here. And part of the data set is latitude and longitude. We're going to use that to reference it spatially into GIS. All right, so to import a text delimited text file into GIS, there's this comma here. If you click on that, it will bring up this dialog box to import a delimited text file. So the first thing you do is you browse for your actual text file. Here it is, right? Open. So it's going to bring it in. Um, this interface is really good at recognizing delimiters. It's just like Excel, like what I showed you in the video. Um, you can specify which character you're using to separate out these fields. Um, and if it's not recognizing, just make sure to check the right one. So if, you know, I use semicolons in this file. If you don't specify that, it's just going to bring every data as one long line. And then you can specify that to break it up. And you see by default, it takes the first line and sets that as the titles. If you don't have titles, which I encourage you to have, if you don't have them, you, know, you can turn it off here, first row field names. And I'll give you some default field names. Okay, so this is a good way to preview and make sure everything is okay. Uh, and then the last thing you have to do is um, you have to tell it where the spatial reference is. Okay? I think if you use lat and long, it'll identify by default. For reasons that I explained in the documentation for this data set, I have this GG lat, GG long, which are the most accurate lat to long to references for this data set. So I have to specify those myself. So X, if you think about in the world, the X dimension is longitude, so it's flipped. So for X field, you specify your longitude column. And then for Y, you specify your latitude. So I'm going to use GG long, GG LNG and GGLAT. And once you tell it that, it's going to take these coordinates and it's going to locate every point. For every line here, it's going to create a point to reference that in the world. And all of these other fields will become the data in the back end in the attribute table. Cool. Uh, so hit OK. It might give you some errors. Again, we're, with big data, we're going to have a lot of messiness. If it gives you some errors saying can't read certain lines, it's OK, you know, especially if it's just a few of them. S stuff gets messed up all the time. And what's nice is like, we don't have to pre-process and make sure every entry is valid. JS will do that on its own and tell you that you know, two of the records weren't placed correctly. Out of 105,000, it's OK. Uh, so the next thing will pop up is a geo reference. So this is super important, too. Uh, because the data is just coming in with some kind of XY data, JS doesn't know what that data is. Because we're using latitude and longitude, we have to tell it uh, that we're using that, and we have to specify basically a geographic coordinate system. This is the first really important thing about projection systems. When you bring in latitude and longitude, you have to make sure to use one of these in this folder. Okay? And the one that's pretty standard that we're going to use is WGS84. Okay, so make sure WGS84 is selected. Hit OK. Uh, so here's the data. It's put it, um, you know, in the right part of the world. So we're on the right track. 
One thing I'll mention right off the bat is with the Weibo and Sofan data sets, you're gonna notice that they're a little bit off. Okay, so if you really zoom in here, you see that this mass, which should be on the land, is shifted a little bit. This is something you're gonna have to accommodate in your final uh, projects. So all that means is uh, any data you use like within Weibo or Sofan is gonna be relevant to itself, correct? Any base data you get from anywhere else will be a little bit shifted. You just have to kind of manually move that in place once you make your maps. Not a big deal. Okay, so here are all my points. Each one of these is one of 105 uh, addresses from Sofan. You can see uh, they are all over the PRD. Oh yeah, so the first thing we want to do after we import a text data set is actually save it back to a shapefile. Okay, so just like everything else in JS, this data isn't in this program, it's just a reference. Uh, but instead of being a reference to a shapefile, it's a reference to a text file. And um, the first thing we want to do is go to right click and save as, and actually just resave all this data as a shapefile format for two reasons. One is shapefiles are much faster because when you start to zoom around this, it's rereading all that text every time, all the 26 megabytes, right? Uh, so shapefiles are optimized for speed. And two, the second reason we want to save it as shapefile is so we can edit it, okay? Uh, JS is an interface for editing shapefiles, but you can't edit, or you really don't want to edit the original text file anyway, okay? So uh, once we have this layer, we just right click and do save as. Here we'll just specify a name, I'm gonna put it on my desktop, I'm gonna call this um, Sofon points and shapefile should be selected by default. Save, and now it's gonna ask for encoding. You can keep this as UTF-8. Um, CRS, by default, it's gonna save it with the same coordinate reference system as the map they used to make it. If this is WGS-84, then keep it. If it's not, you can specify it here by going selected and browse, and you can browse for your coordinate reference system. But if this is WGS-84, I'll just keep it as it is. Um, don't worry about symbology, and then just click Add Saved File to the Map. Make sure this is not selected. We want to store not just the points, but also the attributes or the data behind it. Okay, so make sure Add Saved is clicked. Hit OK. All right, so what it did is it just saved out that all that data as a shapefile. And if we go, like in my desktop right now, you see all these files got created. So this is cumulatively a uh, shapefile. Okay, so it's really important to know that whenever you're working stu with stuff, you're working with outside data sets. And it's really important, like, if you make changes, make sure that you have a, you're working on a copy of the data because you can't just undo. Like, that's probably the third major thing, difference with JS that I should have mentioned in the beginning is that there's no such thing as undo. Okay, once you change something, you've saved that data file. You can't go back. Okay, so now we have this as a shape file. We can delete or remove the original text file. We're not deleting anything really. We're just taking it out of our, out of our uh, map. So this shape file now has the geo uh, information. If we go to the open attribute table, it also has all the data that was brought in from the text file. You can see that each piece of data that we had in the columns is brought in with the name and all the data here. Um, sometimes, for whatever reason, it'll create these extra uh, fields, but it's not a big deal. 